Hello, hello, I'm Melissa Maribel here to show you how to predict products of chemical reactions. For predicting products, make sure you guys know your charges of all of your elements and your polyatomic atoms. All right, are you ready to get started? Let's dive right in. For this example, we are only given our reactants and we're gonna determine our products. So what I like to look at is my little trick for you Kind of like foiling, going back to math, the inner goes with the inner and the outer goes with the outer. So if we apply that trick where our inner elements then combine to form a compound, let's go ahead and always remembering that our metal goes first, so the positive goes first, then the negative goes first. How I like to remember this is you always wanna be positive before you're negative. This is going back to also an ionic compound where we have a metal that's positively charged combined with a non-metal that's negatively charged. So aluminum has a three plus charge and phosphate, one of our polyatomic atoms, has a three minus charge. So luckily right then and there, that's completely balanced for our charges. So our first product, we don't have to add any other subscript and it's just aluminum phosphate. That's the inner with the inner. Now, let's look at our outer with our outer. So our outer with our outer, we'll combine these two to form our next product or our next compound, always thinking positive before we think negative. And we're gonna put that potassium First, since that is our metal and that's our positive charge, and then it will be followed by nitrate since that's our negative charge. So potassium has a plus one charge and nitrate or NO3 has a negative one charge. Note that I did not bring this subscript, that three on down, because that three was only there to balance out the charges within, like potassium within this compound as a whole. Same thing with this other subscript of three for nitrate. I did not bring that down. This is a totally different three, right? I took that three from O3 because that's just what our polyatomic atom is. So these other substrates do not come down when you're predicting your products. Now, continuing with this, our charges are completely balanced. So we will get our next product of potassium nitrate. Note that I have not balanced this out. I'm actually not gonna be balancing equations right now, just showing you how to predict products as a whole. Let's try another example with that whole inner with the inner and outer with our outer to predict our products given our reactants. So our inner with our inner, the sodium and the nitrate, those two would combine to form our first product. Remember, you wanna think positive before you think negative. So our positive is that metal or that Na. This has a positive one charge. I'm not bringing that two subscript down because that two was only there to balance out sodium within this compound or combining to carbonate. Next, let's go ahead and bring down that NO3 with a negative one charge. Once again, I'm not bringing down that two subscript. Looking back at our compound that forms or our product that forms, it's completely balanced of charges. So we will get our first product of sodium nitrate. Now let's look at our next product, the outer with the outer. So magnesium with carbonate. These two would then combine to form our final product and this would give us Mg, so remember positive before you think negative, and we'll have magnesium with a two plus charge and CO3 or carbonate with a two minus charge. How lovely, they are balanced out for us, the charges are already, so that would be our final product. Magnesium carbonate, once again, uh, I did not balance out our, our overall chemical reaction, just showing you how to predict products with the inner with the inner and outer with the outer. I encourage you to keep going, keep practicing, keep trying your best. You can and you will pass chemistry.